Hello, welcome to English with Mrs Smith, filled with tips and techniques to help you gain the highest possible marks for English. In this series, we're looking at writing skills, particularly writing to describe with seven steps to success. In part three of this series, we're going to shift our attention to the senses and the use of good sense in composition. We're also going to consider the impact of figurative language. As a context, we're using a prompt that has appeared several times for descriptive writing, a busy railway station. Throughout this video, we're looking at ways to organize and structure ideas for deliberate effect. The most effective, seamless way to incorporate the senses in your description is to consider them as you brainstorm. Whilst you're collating your ideas about images to include, don't just think visually, also start thinking about the sounds that each of these things might generate, whether there's a particular scent you would associate, or a sense of touch, movement, hot, cold, even sense of taste. Like a chef combining ingredients from a recipe, you want to blend together aspects, the various senses throughout your description. When you describe the trains, think about not just their appearance, but the sounds they make as they depart from the station, as they arrive. Think about also the noise of the public address, the announcements, the tannoy, high-pitched screeching or low muffled sounds, announcements. Think about the people in the station, the business people on their telephones, pulling their briefcases along the platform, the sound of the wheels rolling, luggage. Think also about the movement of the people, how they shuffle and shove their way in crowds in the station to get to and from the trains. Try and combine all of these aspects to bring your description to life. Let's have a look at this in action. A shrill whistle blasts as the early train departs from platform three. Immediately, another train thunders into the station. Its metal wheels screech against the rails, its air brakes hiss, adding to the cacophony of muffled announcements and slamming doors. Passengers stampede. They push, shove and collide in a reckless race along the platform towards the exit, where winter waits to welcome them with icy gusts of freezing rain. Notice here the combination of sound, visual imagery, and also the sense of movement and collision, all adding to an atmosphere maybe of the hustle and bustle of this busy railway station. Leather briefcase clutched beside him, an executive sprints through the wave of arrivals. A tinny voice announces that his train will depart in just three minutes as he jostles past countless strangers. He almost stumbles over an abandoned backpack, but retains his grasp on both his newspaper and morning coffee as he leaps aboard the train. Apart from all the madness, a family hovers. Bobbing above the crowd, they lean and stretch to scan the new arrivals. Sudden recognition brings a collective gasp of relief, with joyful cries and cheers as they wave, then wrap their relatives in a warm, welcoming embrace. An invaluable ingredient in good descriptive writing is figurative language. Now, we could be talking about symbolism, onomatopoeia, hyperbole, oxymoron, but more likely personification, alliteration, which you may have spotted in previous slides, and especially simile and metaphor. Those are the two aspects we are going to focus on. In your description, you may find countless opportunities to make comparison, so that, for example, the speaker might screech like a banshee, the business person running for the train like an athlete, perhaps. But focus on two main elements of your description and let's see how you can develop the metaphor, 
or simile to extend it effectively. In order to develop and extend any metaphor or simile successfully, you need to find several points of comparison. The movement of passengers could be very successfully described as an army of ants. You can find several similarities, but as a challenge in this example, we're going to think of that movement as a torrent of water. The trains as they move in and out of the station could be described in several different ways. The sounds that they make, the shape, the movement. So let's see if we can describe the trains as a dragon. Like some terrible dragon, metallic and unstoppable, the great train roars through the darkness of the tunnel, resisting its handler with a dreadful screech of brakes as it reluctantly rests along the trembling platform. We have made the initial connection. We're describing the train as being like the dragon insofar as it is huge, it is monstrous, it is powerful, it makes a great noise and it needs to be controlled. In order to extend this metaphor, we have to find other points of connection that seem reasonable. A century ago, its ancestors breathed fire, shrouding themselves in clouds of steam. Today, the mighty beast still swoops across the landscape, shackled to mile after mile of iron rails. It devours passengers at each station, spewing them out at the final destination. In a similar way, let's see how by our choice of vocabulary and images, we can make a connection between the movement of the passengers and a torrent of water. Train doors fly open instantly, releasing the cascade of passengers to surge along the platform in an uncontrollable deluge. Carried along by the current, commuters fumble for tickets as they approach the turnstiles. Here, the mass must squeeze itself through narrow channels like white water gushing across rocks. Individuals twist and turn to manoeuvre through the torrent towards the exits where this wave will disperse. If you found this video helpful or interesting, please leave a little comment in the box down below. It's always free to subscribe, so hopefully I look forward to seeing you next time on English with Mrs Smith.